G'day guys, today I'm excited to share with you four one pot meals. So the first one I've got is by far the simplest. It only requires four ingredients. So here I bought some silver side, I bought it online. I kind of expected it to be a lot bigger, but anyway, it worked well. Two carrots and four potatoes, and then this sauce. It's the Master Food Honey Mustard Chicken Sauce. And it worked so well. It just gave it a great flavoring. This is a really hearty meal. And I've been getting questions about, do I wash the veggies? Yes, I do. I normally do it when the groceries come in, but today I'm just doing some because they didn't get washed when they came in. So this was the first time I was doing this dish. So I was kind of working out how to keep the vegetables a really similar size. Um, so I didn't want the little carrots to cook too quickly, but then should I have cut the big carrots in half? Well, thankfully everything came out cooked, so it all worked out well. So the potatoes, I cut them in half, then I cut one half in half, and then that piece in half too. All the recipes are linked below, so please go check them out if you want more details. So I put the potato and carrots down the bottom and then covered the silver side in this sauce and as you can see I had a pasting brush but I didn't need to spread it too much it covered everything really well then I put it on low heat for eight hours and it was ready right before dinner time and this is how it came out so some of them against the walls of the slow cooker were a little bit burnt so I'll have to adjust that next time um, this meal Dave and I absolutely loved the kids were really reluctant to eat it it was the first time they had it so with kids I just kind of keep exposing them to meals um, I don't get fussed if they don't like it the first time the next recipe is one pot crispy chicken with rice. And so I'm just creating a bit of a seasoning for the actual chicken. So using oregano, paprika, I like the sweet and smoked and use that in lots of things. The onion powder, I'm using onion powder over onion salt. Onion powder is 100% ground onion, whereas onion salt has salt in it as well. And, and depending on which ones you use, some of them have salt as their main ingredient, not onion. So this I used chicken thighs. Now the recipe talked about using chicken cutlets. So by using thighs, they didn't need to cook as long. So I covered each piece of chicken thigh in seasoning and in oil, both sides, and then put it into this pot. Now you see this pot used quite a bit. I've got the details in the description box. Do search around though and see if you can get a bit of a bargain. I got mine on special. While the chicken's cooking, I'm gonna pull chopper these two onions. I really like the pool chopper because you can get the onion super small so it kind of blends into your meal rather than bigger pieces of onion that can be picked out. So once the chicken was crispy on one side, I just turned it over so it was crispy on the other side. It is not fully cooked after I'd finished this process and then I took it out and sat it aside before adding in the onion into that pan that was full of flavor with all those herbs and spices and then I put in some garlic as well. I cooked the onion until it was nice and soft and it had this lovely color before I added in the tomato paste. Then this dish required rice. Previously, I haven't had success with one pot meals that require rice. The rice doesn't end up being that cooked. Unfortunately, this time it was probably overcooked because as you can see here, I'm cooking it. Then I put in the chicken broth and I allowed this to cook for a little while before I put the chicken in just wanted to make sure the rice was cooked. The other thing I had to factor in was that I was using thighs, so they didn't require as much time in the oven as what the cutlets do. So when the rice was 75% cooked, I ended up needing to add in some more chicken stock because there was not enough there. And then I added the chicken back on top before putting it into the oven. I had a lower temperature oven because like I said, the rice was cooked. So I did about the 150, um, put that in there for 10 minutes or so. Then I took the lid off for the skin to crisp up. And then I cut open the chicken to ensure that it was fully cooked. And then we served it with canned peas and corn. The next dish is the kids favorite by far. It is one pot sausage and veggies. So this is a great dish if you've got leftover sausages. I didn't, so I just cooked some up in the air fryer, but if you had some leftover for a barbecue, this is a great dish. So the veggies this meal has is broccoli, two carrots, onion, and some tomatoes. We cut up the onion, grated the carrots, oiled up the pan before adding in the onion to give that a little bit of a cook until it was soft. Then I added in the pasta. So this was already cooked pasta. 
before adding in the peeled tomatoes. So you could use crushed tomatoes as well. I just used a can of this, that's what I had in the pantry. And then two cups of chicken stock. And as you can see, I always try and get the very last bit out of cans and jars by using just a little bit of water to swish it around before pouring it in. The broccoli florets were washed and then cut up and then added into the dish and then mixed around before I added in the sausages, which I'd cut up into tiny pieces because I wanted them to last longer. Once the broccoli had been there for a couple of minutes, then I put in the grated carrot, mixed that all around, then let that cook for five minutes and then served. This is delicious. Like I said, big favorite with the kids. The very last one I'm going to be doing is one pot lasagna. This is so simple to do just in the one pot and you can do it all on the stove. Um, so you're going to need two onions, two carrots, and I grated the carrots, pull chopped the onions, and then you pop that in until they've got soft. Then I added in some garlic as well, mixed it around before adding in one kilo of beef mince and then breaking that all up. Then another five minutes of just letting it cook. Next, I added in the bay leaves as well as three cups of beef stock. A full bottle of Posada, this is 700 grams. So using the whole lot and then getting all the extras out with a little bit of water before adding in a couple of spoons of tomato paste. then allowing this to cook for 10 minutes. I put a timer on the microwave because I have a tendency when I'm cooking to try and hurry things along and then the meals aren't as flavorsome as they could be. So 10 minutes just like this before you even think about putting the lasagna sheets on. And salt and pepper to season. And then lasagna sheets, as you'll see here, mine were all kind of broken up so that I could use the whole packet. But another time what I've done is I've just kept the whole sheet and just pushed it down as far as I could. But you just got to make sure you've got enough liquid so that the pasta sheets are cooked. And then I let this cook probably for about 15 minutes. I just waited and checked the pasta sheet to make sure it was cooked before I thought about turning it off. And when it's cooking, just make sure you've got it on the lowest setting, so not bubbling away like that. Just turn it right down. Then just before serving, add in some mozzarella cheese as well as some basil for the top. Now, I just leave it here for the mozzarella cheese to melt. In the recipe, it talks about putting in the oven to kind of grill it. Um, I didn't worry about that. I just did it all on the stove. And there we have it. Super simple and delicious lasagna in one pot. Thanks to all of you who have watched to the very end. I really appreciate it. I really do hope these meals help you with your meal planning this week. Take care. Bye.